Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Full of Life Ministries is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And weekly, we provide topical episodes to encourage you, to inspire you, to uplift you. But ultimately, we want to empower you to live a full and meaningful life. Now, listen, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to thank all of my listeners from around the world. I want to say right now, thank you for your contributions to this ministry. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for connecting with us and making a difference in our world because of your connection with this ministry called Full of Life Ministries. Let's go ahead and get right into today or tonight's episode. Today or tonight's episode is entitled The Prison of Isolationism. (laughs) I want to say that one more time. The Prison of Isolationism. (laughs) I have a hard time pronouncing that word for some reason. (laughs) So listen, people of God, um, today or tonight's memory verse, I want you guys to, to memorize this verse because... The more that you know, it will help you and will enable you to avoid being in prison for whatever reason. Amen. It's Proverbs, the 18th chapter in the first verse, where it tells us one who has isolated himself or herself seeks his or her own desires. He or she rejects all sound judgment. Now, listen, I want us to just take this moment right now and I want you to think about this question that I'm about to pose to you. And the question is, when you think of prison, when you think of the word prison, what comes across your mind? Hmm. (laughs) I can hear you from here. (laughs) When I think of prison, I think of a place that's away from society. It's uh, basically a dark, gloomy place. Obviously, there's prisoners in the prison and there's uh, prison bars and there's... um, It's just a, a, a long time to have to be accountable for a crime that you committed, that you broke the law that you crossed the line, that you found yourself where you did not use sound judgment. And now you are in prison paying for a debt that you committed. Yes. Now we kind of have a general feeling about the word prison. But I want you to also think about the word isolated or being isolated, what come across your mind? (laughs) When I think of isolationism, I think about a lonely place, a place possibly you have put yourself in this place, away from everybody or everyone. And you may exist, you may be at work, you may be at the grocery store or singing a song in a choir, Just because you're mixing amongst people in society does not mean that you're not being isolated because you've shut the door, you've locked the door, you've closed the windows and you're not allowing anybody or anything to come into the most special part of of you, which is your heart, your very soul. And you've isolated yourself because of choices that you might have made, or maybe, just maybe, somebody that's significant in your life tries to place you in this isolated place, and you feel terrible, you feel miserable, and you're looking for answers, and you're looking for a solution, how to get, how do I get myself out of this isolated state? Well, today or tonight's episode is one where We need to look inwardly into our very soul, into our very heart. 
Because this attitude of being isolated from everybody and everything is a recipe for a potentially dangerous outcome to your current situation. Yes, it is. And so today or tonight, I want us to focus on a couple of things, two distinct words in this text that I just read to you. And I want to point these things out to you. And they are seeking your own desires and rejecting all sound judgment. I want to say those two one more time. So I want those words to really sink deeply within your soul, in your mind, in your spirit. Seeking your own desires can cause you to be in a prison, being isolated or rejecting all, not some, all sound judgment. Now, some of us hesitate to commit ourselves to developing an intentional plan of growth that requires accountability or a relationship with others because we believe spiritual growth is a personal and a private matter. You see, we choose to believe each person develops in his or her own way at his or her own rate. But this is an aberration from the truth. Because the the idolatry of individualism has influenced even the way we think about spiritual growth. Because so much of the teaching on spiritual formation is really self-centered and self-focused without any reference to our relationship with other believers, other people who are actually living a life, not a perfect life, but they're striving for, they're striving for not perfection, but being the best, the best that they can possibly be. This is completely unbiblical, though, and ignores much of the New Testament. Because you have to understand, people of God, Christians need relationships to grow. We need one another. We don't grow in isolation from others. We develop in the context, excuse me, in the context of fellowship. So again, isolation, things in isolations in an isolation, uh, isolated state, they deteriorate. Severe punishment in prison is isolation from people, isolation from God, and ultimately you will experience a hell down here on earth because poor judgment, not being sound in your judgment and seeking your own desires. Satan is isn't out to maim you or play around with you. He is out to destroy your walk with God, to crush your faith, to make you feel totally ineffective. Now, there's a scripture in first Peter, chapter five, verses five through nine. And it reads, it says in the same way, I urge you who are younger, accept the authority of. Of other elders, people who have got wisdom and got some knowledge. That's what it's saying here. And everyone clothe yourselves with humility toward each other. Because God stands against the proud, but he gives favor to the humble. Verse 6 tells us, therefore, humble yourselves under God's power so that he may raise you up in the last day. Verse 7 tells us, throw all your anxiety onto him because he cares about you. Verse 8 says, be clear headed. Keep alert. Your accuser, the devil, is on the prowl like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. And verse 9 tells us, resist him, standing firm in the faith, 
Do so in the knowledge that your fellow believers are enduring the same suffering throughout the world. <laughs> These verses tells us that we are not by ourselves, that we are all in the same struggle when it comes to life. And we understand there is an adversary waiting to attack you. But in those verses that I read, it talked about accepting the authority of elders to listen to people who have knowledge to help you grow. When you allow somebody who has more experience than you, you can grow and you won't feel isolated anymore because you'll have the tools necessary to make sure that you're moving forward in God. And then it talks about clothing yourself with humility. <laughs> it talks about being humble under God's power, not under your power, but remaining humble under God's power so he can raise you up, so he can establish you, so he can help you grow, so he can actually guide you throughout life so you can avoid the traps of being isolated, to being in prison, whether it's an insecurity that tries to imprison you, whether it's fear, maybe it has something to do with your family member, or maybe it has something to do with your husband or your wife, or maybe it has something to do with your job, or whatever the issue is, the enemy comes in and he, he prowls around like a roaring lion. He is trying to devour you. He, he is really not playing around and he's trying to get you separated from everybody else and everything that's important to you. And think about how the lion, when it's studying its prey, it waits for that one individual victim to be isolated away from everybody and everything. And so he bends down real low and he actually, he actually prowls, he he lowers his body. He tries to get, get the best angle possible to, to launch an attack on that, that um, victim that he's trying to devour. That's how the enemy tries to do with us. He tries to get us alone, isolated, fearful of our present situation or even our future situation. He tries to get you alone and isolated, so you're not thinking clear headed. You begin to understand that being in prison means that you're powerless. And so when you humble yourselves under the under God's power, he is the one who will raise you up to make you see what the enemy wants to do in your life. And that's why in verse eight, it says, be clear headed and keep alert. See, those who are isolated need to look up and realize who is trying to attack you. And mainly, God gives you a signal. He will send a messenger. He will touch somebody to tell you that you right now are under attack. And please don't become a victim. Listen to the words that I'm saying. Hear me. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to prevent something bad happening to you. So in verse 8, in, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be clear-headed and keep alert, because the devil is on the prowl. And what I love about this scripture, it says, resist him. In verse 9, it says, resist the devil who is trying to isolate you. Resistance means that you have to push back, that you have to confront, not to retreat, but to confront that thing that's been isolating you for a long time. Resist him standing firm in the faith. So when you actually resist the devil, you're under God's authority. He begins to show you how to defeat that thing that's trying to keep you isolated. And I love this last verse that it really reminds all of us 
that we're all suffering throughout the world, that we're all dealing with an enemy, a foe, an adversary that's trying to come in and wreak havoc in your life. But you have to remain humble. You have to throw all of your anxiety, your fears, these premonitions, these these angst, these issues. You have to throw, like literally throw it towards God. All of that to him because he cares so much about you. He does not want you to be isolated. And when you isolate God from allowing God to help you and to prevent the enemy from attacking That's not having sound judgment. That's not operating with a clear head. That's not a person who basically, mm, how can I say this? A person who just are so focused on their own desires that they've allowed the enemy to just creep up on them and sneak up on them and attack them. And keep them in an isolated state. God says there is a better way. You see, when Satan tries to bring believers down, he doesn't use the most clever disguises. He can he can find disguises, but he, he goes back to the same simple strategies over and over again. <laughs> We all know this to be true. The strategy of isolation doesn't mean physical isolation because a person may be in the middle of a crowd and still feel they are all alone. So I want you guys to understand and realize isolation is a feeling of disconnectedness either from God or from someone who knows what is really going on inside of our heart. Now listen, at some point, Satan moves in to destroy on a lot of fronts. A lot of times he tries to come in and destroy us through accusations. And these are usually tape messages that we hear in our minds after there has been an incident or time of defeat. How can you call yourself a Christian? You say you want to love God and and yet you still struggle with this issue. He sees what a hypocrite you are. If you really loved him, you would just stop and just, you you fill in the blank, people of God. You think God wants to see your face right now? (laughs) You know you're dirty. Why don't you just go clean yourself up and show God you're serious? When you're, when are you going to get over this? Because you keep making empty promises. You know, on and on and on. These accusations that the enemy presents to you. We are told that Satan accuses us to God day and night. He is relentless in trying to take us down with our guilt and shame. And he uses the half-truth of our failed performance. But notice... You know, those voices which never really sound like Satan. It usually sounds more like our own thoughts. Never get to the second half of the truth. There has been a sacrifice made for you that covers all of your sins. And that is the sacrifice that Jesus did for you over 2,000 years ago. So that's one thing that When Satan moves in to isolate you, he tries to accuse you of falling short. And then the other thing is that he he uh, tries to destroy us through destructive patterns. You know, dealing with a sin would be much easier than dealing with a bondage to a particular area. You know, being a prodigal and coming back in a one time event would be easier than having to deal with that same thing over and over and feeling that we are outgrowing our welcome with God. That he can use, that he could, uh, you know, be as happy to welcome us back after the 10,000th time 
as he was the first time we turned to him. It just seems beyond comprehension. When we feel isolated and the lie comes, I can't go back to God about this again. <laughs> then what is the only thing left to turn to? The destructive pattern that put us in that position in the first place. Isolation from grace feeds destructive choices. This is why bringing those shameful practices into the light breaks the power of them. Satan holds us like a ball and a chain because we are trying to do it on our own. So destructive patterns is exactly what he tries to do to up in you, to make you feel guilty where you never seek God for freedom. Another way how, he, how the enemy attacks us is through hopelessness. When we feel isolated, we lose sight of the fact that lots of others are going through or have gone through the same battles that we're going through right now. We often lose sight of the fact that we are in a process and not at the final product. We feel that we are the worst person because that's all we can see. And in the end, we feel this will never change. <laughs> My life will never be any different. It will continue in this pattern just like it has for the last umpteen years. The truth is, a person who can still feel the pain of sin and is sensitive to God's spirit to the point of wanting to be free from sin is ripe for change. And it is isolation that Satan uses as a last ditch attempt to keep you in hopelessness and from moving into the right choices. I want us to understand and realize, don't let hopelessness tear you down. He also accuses you of these uh, false promises. You see, the devil deceives us with many false and empty promises. Most of these relate to the lie that we will be happier and more fulfilled if we sin or deny aspects of the truth. Whatever passing pleasure come with sin, they are in fact passing. Great and accumulated suffering eventually comes with almost all sinful activity. Yet despite this experience, we human beings remain very gullible. <laughs> we seem to love empty promises and put all sorts of false hopes in these promises. And this, is, this, this way of thinking can ultimately create isolation from the actual truth. Because John 8 and 44 tells us that Satan is the father of lies. And so we have to understand how much God loves us. And when we understand how much God loves us, and when we understand isolation, we have to understand God cares about our loneliness. From the beginning, God knew of our need for connectedness. When God created Adam, he placed him in the perfect environment and gave him direct access to him. Ah, but God knew this wasn't enough. He knew Adam's deepest desire, so he created Eve, a helper, one who would complete him and provide him with real companionship. And Jesus understands our loneliness. Jesus was both fully God and fully man, experienced all kinds of the feelings, temptations, and hardships that we do on this earth. So we can take comfort knowing he understands firsthand what it's like to be lonely too. When he was hanging on the cross burying our sins, the father turned away for a brief but excruciating painful moment. Jesus experienced true abandonment. <laughs> he died on the cross so we could never have to experience the ultimate pain of rejection. Listen, people of God, we don't have to experience loneliness and isolation any longer because God, 
our great God already provided a way to fulfill our deepest desires. And he, and he does this through relationships, starting with himself and then with others. Jesus loves us the way we are and invites us to have a personal relationship with him. In uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Jesus invites us to go through this life with him so you don't ever have to be isolated. He wants to help us carry our burdens and fulfill the deepest desires of our hearts. But the key is you have to realize, realize uh, I'm sorry, realize your needs. It's our pride. That's the reality. It's our pride that keeps us from believing that we don't need other people. I want you guys to listen to me tonight. Attachment is essential. Life was made for relationships. It can't even be just you and God. You have to, you have to move towards others. And I know I can hear you. It might seem intimidating, but most people are struggling as you are. They don't have it all together. They need you to make the first move, though. So guess what? Be vulnerable. Because I've learned that people who act and look like they have it all together, <laughs> the reality is they don't. When someone peels the mask off, it becomes very attractive because we all know that none of us have it all together. So let's let's really in today or tonight's episode let's change our thinking challenge those old tapes those old CDs those those uh, I can't even say v, VCSs uh, VHSs that's what I was trying to say let's get rid of all those old database all those old files that we need to just delete out of our computer within our soul. Let's get rid of all that stuff. Let's change our thinking and play and play something that's more positive. Stop playing that negative stuff in your mind because that negative stuff creates isolationism. And then take some risk. Step out. <laughs> Step out in faith. Start meeting people. Start initiating a chance for friendships and for someone that has the same uh, characteristics that you have. Step out. Take some risk. Reach out to somebody. Be empathetic. Identify with others. Hurts. And become other-centered. Not self-centered, but other centered. I have never found a great listener who doesn't have tons of friends. And lastly, people of God, continue to pray every single day. Pray, talk to God about it. Communicate your feelings of isolationism and then trust God. Ephesians 4 verses 9 through 10 tells us two people are better than one, for they can help each other succeed if one person falls. The other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, the twelfth verse tells us a person standing alone can't be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So in closing, people of God, I hope that you enjoyed this particular episode. 
that's entitled the prison of isolationism. Because the reality is you can't grow spiritually in isolation. So it's imperative that you move beyond what's holding you back so that you can grow with Christ and serve him with an even greater passion. I want to take this moment and I want to pray for your needs. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all your many blessings. I thank you for allowing these words to minister to your people. And I pray, oh God, that those who are feeling vulnerable, feeling isolated because of their own personal sins that they've committed against you, or maybe somebody has placed them in to an isolated state. I pray, oh God, that you would just let them know that they're not by themselves, that you are with them every step of the way. And your word says in Psalms 23, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will not fear because you're with us. And knowing that you're with us, knowing that you're a forgiving God and that you love us in spite of ourselves, in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of some of the choices that we made, our own desires, wanting things that did not line up with your word. I pray, oh God, that every listener under the sound of my voice, that you will continue to bless them and to wash them and to cleanse them and help them during this difficult time and let them know that with you, you can break the chains that's holding them down, that has them in prison, and that you can loose the person who is captive in sin, who is captive in fear, who has been in prison with insecurity. I pray, oh God, that you will lift the burden and that you will open the door so they can walk out with you hand in hand. And because you hold the keys to life, let them see your greatness like never before. And I ask all these blessings in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. People of God, thank you for tuning in for today or tonight's episode entitled The Prison of of isolationism. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries, San Diego. Thank you for tuning in for today or tonight's episode. If there's anything that we can do to help you along your Christian journey, don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Once again, fulloflifesd at gmail.com. If you'd like to donate to our ministry, we have a cash app, which is the dollar sign, lowercase, full of life, the last two letters, is capitalized S and D. You can give that way or to any of the platforms that you currently listening to right now for Full of Life Ministries. Love you with the love of Christ. Thank you guys for tuning in. It was a blast. I hope that what was said will minister to your heart and meet every single need because that's how awesome God truly is. Once again, this is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Love you with the love of Christ. See you next time. God bless.